everybody. I want to welcome you to Maui Divers. We, we appreciate very much for taking the time to come today. Uh, my name is Bob Taylor. I'm president and CEO of Maui Divers. And I'd like to introduce our very distinguished guest for this. Have your welcome today. To my immediate left is Dr. Sylvia Earle. She's here in Hawaii as part of the Sustainable Seas Expeditions, and she's ex explorer and residence for National Geographic Society. Next is Scott Villano. Okay, Scott is president and chief operating officer. American Deepwater Engineering. I'm sorry, Scott. American Deepwater Engineering. Uh, and next is Dr. Richard Gregg, professor of oceanography for University of Hawaii and the leading authority in the world on precious corals. Uh, we're here today to announce an agreement that has been entered into between Maui divers and American Deepwater Engineering to harvest precious pink coral and precious gold coral in Hawaiian waters. American Deepwater Engineering has brought in two state-of-the-art deep water, deep worker submersibles for this purpose. Uh, they will be doing the actual harvesting and Maui divers will be doing the marketing. Recently they have completed their first exploratory dives and over on that table on the left you can see some of the coral that they've brought up. Both pink coral and gold coral. Uh, and Maui Divers, we're just really, really excited about this. We've been in an expansion mode recently. We added seven retail stores last year. We're planning to add another seven or eight stores this year. And we need more product. And for a long time, we've had to get along with a very small amount of both gold coral and pink coral. So this will give us the, the supplies that we need to go ahead and expand our lines and really go out and market precious pink coral and precious gold coral. So at this point I'd like to refer to Scott who, you know, I just want to say, I mean, he's just done a tremendous job over the last three years. He's been working on this project for three years. He's really persevered to get all the proper permits, uh, to bring in the right vehicles for the harvesting, to develop the right techniques, and you know, he's to be really congratulated. Scott? Oh, thank you, Bob, I appreciate that introduction. Uh, uh, you know, we're real happy to be uh, uh, working with uh, Maui Divers, a pretty first class company, and uh, uh, you know, it's a very Hawaii oriented company, and uh, we consider ourselves to be the same way. Uh, we. Uh, just recently had our 25th anniversary here in uh, Hawaii, and uh, really uh, feel that the you know acquisition of these two new submersibles to the Pacific to our company is really going to uh, open up a lot of opportunity, uh, especially for our uh, efforts with uh, the precious corals industry. Um, one of the things that we've been working on. Uh, over the last three years is the uh, permit process with the state and the federal governments and um, uh, we're uh, pretty uh, closely monitored by National Marine Fisheries in terms of what uh, our operations are allowed to do and uh, that's been a real uh, uh, interesting process, a learning process, but uh, I really feel that um, ultimately having the capability to go to 2,000 feet uh, in the Pacific area, uh, having a local capability in Hawaii is going to be a benefit to uh, uh, to the state and uh, federal governments ultimately. Um, the uh, uh, probably one of the best examples of that is uh, Sylvia Earl, uh, who's sitting next to me, and I'll turn it over uh, to Sylvia. This I really endorse this collaboration and the way that the people involved are going about the business of exploring and using the ocean but being careful not to use it up. <laughs> so often with what is characterized the approach that people have toward resources in the sea, 
we haven't known in advance what is out there and haven't really been very careful about what is taken from the sea. And all over the world, many of the species that are removed, whether they're fish or shellfish or in some places even the corals that are taken, are in real trouble because of the methods that are used and because of the approach that is used. What I really like about what's happening here is the care with which the collection is done. They're selective. It isn't bulldozer approach where everything is taken, but with the submersibles, you can identify what should be taken or what can be taken and what should be left in place. And there is the intent from the beginning to really achieve the sustained use of something that really is valuable to the people of Hawaii, the people of the world. We, we really treasure these creatures for their inherent beauty. And one of the goals is to make sure that while what is taken is being selected, other things are being selected to leave in place as a source of renewal. And the idea of having places that will be truly left alone uh, in the spirit of sanctuaries. I'm here right now as a part of the Sustainable Seas Expeditions, a National Geographic project in cooperation with NOAA. We're working in the marine sanctuaries of the United States. There are 12 of them. And here in Hawaii, there's one that's dedicated primarily to humpback whales and the environment in which they live. That environment, of course, includes the waters that start at the top and go down to as deep as the waters do around Hawaii. And I've longed to come back since I was here in the 70s studying the whales to see what the whales see on their own terms and using the little deep worker submersibles over the past couple of weeks, I've had a chance to do just that. To not just go where the whales are at the surface where people tend to see them, but to take the plunge and go down into the depths where the precious coral lives, where the whales dive all the time. And to see some of the creatures that are there, to see the environment. And one of the goals of the expedition that will take place over the next several years, we'll be back and deploy instrument packages in places that will provide ongoing information and insight into the nature of the ocean, including places where the precious coral lives. And working with Maui divers, working with American Marine Corporation and American Deep Water Engineering, I think over the years ahead, we'll gain, gain powerful new insights into how the ocean works and new insights into how to take care of the ocean that takes care of us. Uh, I certainly concur with all that, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, Ricky uh, Greg on our left here uh, is a um, uh, professor at, at the University of Hawaii and um, uh, has as a part of his uh, science over the years, uh, I won't mention how many years, uh, <laughs> uh, made precious corals, uh, uh, you know, his focus. And uh, uh, I'd like to turn that over to Rick now. Thank well, you. Scott, thank you. In fact, it's been about 40 years. Um, as I think back, I started uh, my master's thesis at the University of Hawaii in 1960, and uh, it turned out to be on black coral. And since that time, I've been involved uh, in the research of precious corals uh, at Scripps Institutional Oceanography for six years. And then I came back to Hawaii and joined the faculty at the University of Hawaii in 1970. And I've been working on the ecology of uh, deep precious corals ever since, along with other things. Uh, it's a very exciting time now to be in oceanography, to be um, here to have the opportunity to dive with uh, the high technology afforded by American deep water engineering, their deep worker submersibles, uh, not just to learn more about precious coral, but also to engage in other research projects. Uh, I've been lucky to be involved with Sylvia and her uh, Sustainable Seas Expedition, and last week we discovered a number of very exciting things, one of which was a, um, a deep water drowned lake that used to be above sea level. In fact, it used to be a freshwater lake halfway between Maui and Lanai. And we are proposing Sylvia's program and uh, those of us involved to the state to uh, set this area aside as a marine preserve. 
So my point here is that we're not just studying precious coral, we're studying the ocean. And out of that comes knowledge, which can be applied to preserve areas. And we're proposing just that, that we um, develop a marine park or preserve for research uh, to be protected in perpetuity. Now, getting back to precious corals, um, they look like trees, I know. You, you might even think they're plants uh, because of their appearance, but they're actually animals, uh, very closely related to sea anemones and jellyfish, but they secrete hard skeletons of calcium carbonate in the case of pink coral. In the case of gold, it's a protein. It's very similar to your fingernail, but it's got iodine in it, which gives it the luster. Uh, and that raw material, of course, is used to manufacture jewelry, uh, very um, elegant jewelry. I think Maui Divers is probably um, the, uh, the finest uh, manufacturer of designer jewelry in the world. And I've, I've, that's a big statement because there's a lot of companies. It's about $50 million industry at the wholesale level worldwide. Um, the state I would like to um, add to this background about corals and the harvesting of corals is very much concerned about their sustainability and they're closely managing this resource. The state has stringent guidelines for the taking of black coral uh, in the form of size limits. And the federal government has weight quotas for the pink and the gold corals. So they're very closely uh, managed by both state and federal agencies. And my job is to keep a vigilant eye on uh, the harvesting record that's taking place um, in order to sustain this beautiful resource for future generations. Thank you. For over 40 years, it's been really dedicated to long-term, you know, having a sustainable resources for our company. And, uh, and we're, you know, we're committed in, for the next 40 years, next 100 years, we want the resources to be there. So it's, we're very fortunate to be able to work with some people like Dr. Greg, Dr. Earl, and get advice from them. And we will continue to do everything in our power to conserve the resources. After we're done here, I'd, for everybody that has not taken our tour, I'd like you to, if you can take 20 minutes, I think you'll really enjoy our tour. It starts on the next floor. You can see the complete process. We have a nice film, exhibit area, large showrooms really like to invite you to take our tour. But in the meantime, I, I would like to open it up to questions if anybody has questions. Yes. I don't know about this project. As a Maui diver, do you do something for conserving uh, the environment? I mean, donation? Do you do something for Well, the, the main thing I think that we do over the years, and most importantly, is that we're always involved involved in selective coral harvesting. We do make contributions from time to time to different organizations that are involved in conservation as well. Might I add to that just a comment that some of the collection of precious corals elsewhere in the world and by other companies is done with a very Un indiscriminate way of simply dragging across the entire system, taking everything that's in the path, not selective at all. It's rather like taking a bulldozer through a forest, taking everything when all you want is a few little shrubs. That is ex just, it's terribly destructive and not at all the approach that is being embraced by these companies. And that's what is so exciting here that with the new technologies combined with the ethic of looking for the long pull, for the sustained use of something of value, that it, it really serves as a potential model for other, others who are interested in the sustained use of any living resource. Looking at first knowing how much is out there and knowing what you can take and what you must not take is really the key. If we did this with species of fish, we're not doing it right now. Most fish species are taken indiscriminately and we're paying the price. The populations have collapsed around the world with species after species. 